Velkommen til Challenge Danmark 2015 i Herning og Bilund, hvor flere end 1.500 triatleter af begge køn, en skøn blanding af amatør og topprofessionelle verdensstjerner, er parate til at udfordre deres indre jernmand på en naturskøn, men absolut krævende rute, som byder på blandt andet 3,8 km svømning, 180 km på cykel og til slut en afrunding, en lille rask maraton på 42,2 km. Vi ligger ud med svømning i Fuglsangs Sø, hvor det er det stjernespækkede fedt på mændenes halvdistance med blandt andre danske Martin Jensen og Dirk Bockel fra Luxembourg, der tiltrækker sig størst opmærksomhed. This is your comeback race. You won in Melbourne. You had an injury and now you're back. Expectation for the race. First of all, I want to see if the body is cooperating. I, I did a lot of preparation now to get ready for the big races coming up very shortly after this race. So this is the final big check for me. But it's a big deal for me because I want to see how good I am now and how the body is dealing with all the workload that I put in. And coming back after an injury after over a year, it's, it's difficult. Uh, it's good competition here. Markus Wachbach, the two Danish guys as well, Martin Jensen and Hendrik. So it's going to be a tough race and I uh, just want to see where I am. So this is, uh, you, you, you mentioned it yourself, it's Martin, it's Hendrik, it's you we are, we are looking for. Um, is this about how your body will react or are you aiming for the, fir- for the, for the first part? Well, first of all, I want to I give my, my absolute maximum. And if that's a first place, that would be fabulous. If it's a third place, I'm still happy. A podium is always good. So I'm aiming to have a good podium result, and uh, I know the two guys they have their, their, their personal Danish battle to to fight here, from coaching athlete together. Uh, the big goal is the World Championships in two weeks. That's where I really want to be on the top of my game. But this is important. It's just a checkup to to know where I am. Still a little tired from training, but no excuses. If you race, you always have to go maximum. <laughs> Martin, we talked yesterday. You are you're pretty confident. You will do good. Uh, race morning. How do you feel? Oh, well, I had a good night's sleep, and I mean, I'm here. Everything is ready. Bike set up is is done, and and looking at the lake, it's just gonna be. It's a beautiful day for a race, and I'm excited. Are you ready to uh, kick some butt? Oh, I'm I'm ready to unleash the beast, and and I mean, I have a lot of energy inside, and I'm just ready to let it all go, and and see what it what it gets me. I'm I'm very confident that that I have uh, had a good preparation, and and I will have a a great. We'll put on a great show today. So it's Turk and it's uh, Henrik and it's you, or is it the other way around? Uh, well, well, I mean, uh, it's 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 not just the three of us. There's other guys too: Markus Fachbach, uh, Thomas Drange. There's a whole bunch of guys that can do a very solid race. And I mean, I hope I'm the strongest guy in the day. But it's time to let the legs talk now. Og Martin Jensen lader både arme og ben tale på den 1,9 km lange svømmerute, hvor han fra start lægger sig i spidsen af feltet i den kunstigt skabte Fuglsangsø. Og her gør kvinderne sig klar til deres konkurrence, hvor danske Michelle Vesterby er på hjemmebane, og amerikanske Mary Beth Ellis den helt store favorit. What's your expectation for this race? I'm just really excited to get out there and, and have a have a good race. It looks like it's going to be an amazing course, um, a nice, cool swim in the lake, and then a flat, fast bike. And um, the run course, I ran a little bit of it yesterday, and it looks like it's going to be a good mix of some dirt and some road and some shade and some sun. So um, I'm excited, and it's got a great women's field, so I'm going to have plenty of competition. Your list of your – you have a long list of uh – Great, uh, great victories um, today. Uh, how are you going to end up today? Um, obviously, any time I enter a race, I'd, I'd love to win. But um, yeah, you just, you never know. Um, it just depends on how I go and how the other girls go. But um, yeah, I'm going to give it my best shot. A couple of words on this, uh, the whole um, uh, competition here in Billund. Uh, how are they doing? Yeah. Oh great, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a it's an amazing event they have. A first year event. It looks like the the crowds on both the half and the Ironman are are going to be great. And um, yeah, it's it looks like it's going to be a, a good day for it too. How's that to race on your home court? That's really awesome. I just woke up 10 minutes ago and now I'm here in the transition area. I slept with my mom and dad, so I've been taken good care of. It's awesome. Yeah, I hope there will be a lot of old friends coming to cheer for me this morning. And uh, you're traveling around the world and uh, now you're on home court. Uh, are you going to win this or what are your, what, what are your expectations for this race? 
I don't have many expectations. Of course, I would love to win here on home course. That's what I'm aiming for, because that would be amazing to be the first one crossing the finish line at the first edition of Challenge Denmark. But I also have some hard competition here. I'm in a hard training blocks towards Frankfurt in three weeks. So I don't know, it can go both ways. I feel, I know I'm in the shape of my life, but I'm also feeling a little bit tired. I don't know if it's because of all the people I know I have to talk to, or it's because, it's of course, because of a lot of training. So it can go both ways you have a competition of another star uh, war star you know uh, Mary Beth um, well it's gonna be a tough race isn't it yeah MB is a tough girl to beat and of course it will be hard competition she just changed to Brett Sutton to getting everything under control and know where she's going she's also in hard training like me she's doing ITU world so we both you know in the same period of training so we will see how it goes I think the best day girl on the day will win and the last question this is the first time that challenge Spillon is 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 here they're doing pretty good, don't you think so? I really think the organization has done a great job, not because it's my husband who's the race organizer, but I really think it's awesome here, you know, with, you know, you had, I never seen a 4,000 square feet uh, transition area in all red, you know, they are for sure really been taking care of the details. There's a stage in the water ready to play for us when the first starters is going, so I have never seen anything like it, I have to admit, so. So you're going to enjoy it today too, huh? For sure, I will enjoy every second of it, and I'm just so happy waking up to sunshine. They've been promising really bad weather this week, but and of course it affects the race, but this is just awesome. People are wearing t-shirts at 7 o'clock in the morning, so it's awesome. Michelle Vesterby med røde svømmebriller og dybt fokuseret. I 2013 endte hun på en imponerende 8. plads ved det prestigefyldte Hawaii Ironman, og svømning er en af hendes stærke discipliner. Hun var konkurrencesvømmer i sin skoletid, men hun skal være helt på toppen i alle discipliner, hvis hun skal tro Mary Beth Ellis. Og her er mindene på vej op ad vandet, og det er danske Martin Jensen, der er i spidsen, men tæt fuldt af Dirk Bockel, Henrik Hyllelund, Thomas Strange og tyske Paul Schuster i løb hen mod skiftesonen, hvor cykler. Her er det Dirk Bockels fastspændte cykelsko på pedalerne, og 90 km med modvind på de jyske landeveje venter forude. Selvom han havde en rigtig flot 2014-sæson, er det overraskende, at det er den kun 21-årige uansaner Thomas Strange, der kommer først ind til de ventende cykler. Men også i skifteområdet er rutine en vigtig faktor, og det er da også erfarne Dirk Bockel, der er hurtigst til at få spændt hjelmen og kan forlade skifteområdet som den første af deltagerne på mændenes halvdistance. Altså allerede hul mellem favoritfeltet og forfølgerne, som her danske Jens Toft, der har sat måske lidt for meget turbo på, for at nå op til de førende. Der er som tidligere nævnt flere end 1500 deltagere i konkurrencen og en overvejende del af ganske almindelige motionister, selvom ganske almindelige måske ikke er det helt dækkende udtryk, når man tæller om udøvere af triathlon. Så er vi tilbage ved kvindernes halvdistance, hvor det er overraskende af britiske Catherine Jameson, der er første kvinde op ad vandet med 25 sekunder ned til favoritten Mary Beth Ellis og hele 49 sekunder foran Michelle Vesterby. Og her igen den førende Britte på vejen i området med de parkerede cykler og hurtig hjelmen på. Så er sted 90 km landevejscykling vinter forude. Mary Beth Ellis i kraftfuld løb mod sin cykel. Og hurtigt videre. Og her er den lokale favorit Michel Vesterby. To minutter efter Tanja Larsson fra Københavns Triathlon Klub. Det skal gå hurtigt i skiftområderne, og derfor skaber det her sjældne syn også forundring og morskab i Hall of Fame triathlon-legenden Bob Babbitts kommentatorboks. Putting socks on, you don't see that very often. Then also putting a shirt on, uh, looks like a cotton shirt. 
after having a wet body, putting your helmet on first and then deciding to pull on, oops, wait a second, where's my, oh, my shirt, I forgot to put that on. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's, I guess it's all personal and it's all choice, but uh, I think this athlete, Eloise Crawley, she's actually from Wales. Så er deltagerne på mindenes halvdistance i gang med at knæve kilometer efter kilometer af jysk landevej i sig på deres vej fra Herning til Bilund. Her er det danske Henrik Hyllelund, der har fundet det rette tråd i en grad, så det må koste på kontoen for moral hos de mange amatørtriatleter, han overhaler. Og her er den unge fynbo Thomas Strange, Ganske overraskende, helt tæt på stjernen Dirk Bokkel. Bokkel tilhører den absolute verdenselite. Ikke færre end fire gange er han ind i top 10 i den Ironman-konkurrence, alle tre atleter drømmer om at vinde eller bare deltage i. Den legendariske Ironman-ikona på Hawaii, hvor temperaturen normalt er lidt bedre end i dag her på de jyske landeveje. Men det er ikke kun været, der har indflydelse på løbet, det handler også om det rette udstyr. Her ser vi Martin Jensen nærmest flyve forbi en gruppe af amatørtriatleter og lægge især mærke til forskellen på Martin Jensens cykel og motionisternes. For selvom også amatører gør alt for ikke at gå ned på teknik, så skal der gribes dybt i lommen, hvis udstyret skal være samme klasse som hos de professionelle. If you have to go and buy everything as it is, you would probably end up around 20.000 euros. So basically everything on the bike is, is optimized for aerodynamic performances. Uh, all my position is dialed in so that I make as, as little resistance in the wind as possible when I'm on the bike. We got ceramic bearings everywhere on the bike. We got deep aero wheels. We got everything on the bike made in, in aerodynamic shapes. All the tubes are made for, for perfect wind distribution along the bike. Just to, to make sure that those few extra seconds that, that can be gained are gained uh, and nothing is left on the table. Selvom det er halvdistancerne, der er mest fokus på på grund af stjernebesætningen hos både mændene og kvinderne, så præsteres der også på fuld distancen, hvor blandt andet tyske Beate Gertz og portugisiske Vanessa Pereira gør sig gældende. Mere om fuld distance hos både mænd og kvinder i den spændende finale, når vi er tilbage efter en kort pause. Velkommen tilbage til Challenge Danmark 2015 og verdensklasse triathlon på en krævende rute mellem Herning og Bilund. 3,8 km svømning, 180 km på cykel og 42,2 km maraton. Det er det, at atleterne har lagt bag sig, når de senere på dagen passerer målstregen i Bilund. Men det er især den halve distance, hvor en række af verdens førende triatleter stiller op, der tiltrækker sig opmærksomhed og især tvikampen mellem danske Martin Jensen og Dirk Bockel har mange sit fremtid. Og her er det netop Bokkel og Jensen, der kommer ud fra skiftesolen i Bilund og med Bokkel i spidsen. Jensen har ellers ført hele vejen, og en sejr var der også, hvad danskeren tog frem til, da vi talte med ham op til løbet. I'm a big strong guy. Wind won't move me. I will move through the wind, and it's just gonna maybe take a little longer time if we have a headwind, but that won't make any difference. So uh, if bad weather condition affect the people mentally, uh, it doesn't affect you, so that's the strength, I guess. I mean, I've I've been training here in Denmark for the last three months, uh, leading up to this race, and today and yesterday was the first time we had over 20 degrees in I don't know how long, and so I've, I'm used to the rain and winds and cold and everything. So just bring it on tomorrow; it doesn't matter. Og her kommer så de øvrige favoritter som perler på en snor. Først Henrik Hyllelund, som bliver tilfuldt af den unge komiet Thomas Strange. Og nu i en lindstrøm ud for skifteområdet. Nils Brandt Jørgensen kan jo mærke tidligere sergeant i militærpolitiet, udsendt til Kosovo, Irak og Afghanistan, og Jens Toft, elektriker, men fuldtidstriatlet siden 2009. På kvindernes halvdistance er det Michelle Vesterby, der jagter førende Catherine Jameson med Nicoline Rabeck Sørensen lige efter, og først på en fjerdeplads stor favoritten Mary Beth Ellis, tæt fuldt af Tanja Larsen, og Pernille Talon fra Aarhus 1900. 
Det er en flad rute, løberne skal ud på. Den går igennem Bilund centrum og ind på travbanen. I alt 10,5 km, som skal gennemløbes to gange, før halvdistanceløberne når målstregen i Lalandia. Hos minden er det stadig Dirk Bokkel, der fører, og nu i ensom majestæt. Martin Jensen er sat, og i en grad, så han har valgt at forlade løbet. Og her kæmper Thomas Strange og tyske Markus Fagbak mand mod mand med Paul Schuster lige efter. Og det er Bokkel, der kan løbe først ind på opløbsstrækninger, og endda med en så overlegen afstand til de nærmeste konkurrenter, at der er tid til både smil og high fives, før han i sit comeback-løb storsmilende kan strække armene i vejret og sige, se, jeg er tilbage for fuld styrke. Dirk, we talked yesterday about you won uh, Ironman Melbourne last year, and really positive and negative. You win, hurt your hip, and it's been uh, a battle ever since. Yeah, it's been a couple of very up and down months, and uh, yeah, let's say 20 pounds overweight over the winter, and debating am I going to come back or not. And I guess I proved today I'm back, and it took a lot of effort to come back. Probably 10, 12 months of very, very dedicated work, and I'm still not running as much as I should be. But it's it's okay. I mean, uh, it was a great checkup. It was a great comeback, and now it's all about recovering. And we got World Championships coming up in two weeks, so there's no time for celebration. Uh, back to the drawing board for for the next two weeks. Yeah. You know how quickly things change. You win a race, and ever all your sponsors are happy. And the hard part about this sport is, it's what have you done for me lately? And you're in, you know, last. Year Year of contracts how important was this race well I think it, it sends a pretty good message uh, first of all it's a big thank you to, to, to my team you place BMC for supporting me also in the difficult times and uh, you know uh, I've been on the contract for two years with a, with a fabulous team and uh, I think team is, is anyways the, the, the future in triathlon for me it's a uh, Or for, for most of us, it's the year where you fight for a new contract. So uh, coming back with a win for the first race in the season, it's always a good thing. But uh, let's try to perform on the big race too in the, in the next two weeks and four weeks. And yeah, I'll do my best to keep the contract. Og man må også sige, at Thomas Strange har gjort sit bedste med en imponerende anden plads. Coming here and taking second behind Dirk Bockel in front of a Martin Jensen and, and guys like that. How big is this for you? It's just <coughs> really incredible and I I didn't dare to believe I could do this before today um, there's such amazing and uh, experienced guys yes um, so yeah it was far above my expectations when we saw you come out of the water with those guys that was step one that was great and then how long were you able to stay with the you know, Dirk Bockel and, and Martin who are powerhouses on the bike and usually if someone's coming from ITU They don't consider them that strong a, a cyclist, but you were you were right there. Yeah, well, I kept up with them for the first uh, 30k, uh, but then they got a bit of, too big of a gap, and I had to go uh, almost all out um, for 30k <coughs> to keep up with them uh, and try to close the gap. But I didn't exactly manage to close it all the way, and at around 60-65k, I lost them. Og mere dansk dynamit, eller Danish Diesel, som konkurrenterne kalder Michel Vesterby, der her løber i mål som nummer et. Mens hun 100% demonstrerer sit eget motto, keep smiling. Michelle, what did it feel like to win in your hometown? That's just an amazing feeling. I'm super happy right now, and yeah, I don't know what to say. I'm speechless for once in my no life. No way. No way, I'm actually not. But I'm really happy about winning here. That means something special to me for sure. Now, some of the guys are telling me that they know you as a Danish diesel because you have one speed, mm. that you are a great Ironman athlete, but shorter distances you're not great at. You don't, you don't run that fast. Well. When I saw you out there, you looked different than I've seen you before. As a runner, you looked like a runner. 
Do you feel? Do you feel that? Do you feel you're more of a runner than you've ever been? I definitely feel like a runner now. So I'm just like when people ask me, "What is your strongest?" and you always have to say the swim or the bike. I'm just like, no, I'm actually all around now. I think my running has come so good together right now. So I will put the bike and be competitive on the run too. I actually catched a girl on the run today, so that was an amazing feeling. <laughs> yes, that's yeah. right. You yeah. did, right? I did, yeah. And now, where did you catch her? I catched her after around 7K, I think. What? And she had a, what, a minute and a half, two minutes off the bike? More than two oh, was minutes. It, was it over two minutes? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so, uh, so it all So all of a sudden you have a weapon called your run. Exactly. So that's awesome. Yeah, yeah I'm really happy about that too. And, you know, winning a race. You've won you know, Ironman Lanzarote. You were eighth in Kona. But winning in your hometown and winning... Danish conditions. You know, it, was, it was sunny, it was cloudy, it was rainy. It sort of had it all. Yeah, it had it all. So it was typical Danish weather. When it's best. <laughs> Talk about what the red. Now, this leads into Ironman Frankfurt. Is that next? Yeah, so I have Ironman Frankfurt in, next, in three weeks where I have to get my last Kona points because I haven't a, done a long distance race this year. So I'm all excited to do that, you know, because as you just said, half distance is really too short for me. I don't. I only have that one speed, so I could easily have done 90k more on the bike in the same speed. I actually did my Ironman speed when I was biking today so I need a little bit longer to get started so I cannot wait to to do Frankfurt. Men i dag er altså speed nok til at henvise Mary Beth Ellis til anden pladsen med imponerende 2 minutter og 43 sekunder. All right, we're here at Challenge Denmark with our second place finisher, Mary Beth Ellis, who uh, is known as the Honey Badger. Honey Badger, fun time. Yeah, it was a, a great event. Um, the course was was amazing, you know, a nice lake swim. Um, the rows out there are just flat and fast, and then the run through through town here was was really fun. There are a lot of spectators out there. Um, yeah, it was a it was a great day, great course. Um, and for a first year event, everything was done really well. The markings on the bike and the run were perfect. You know, there's no way you could go off course, right. so it was, it was great. So do you feel like you're, you, I know you, you said last year you felt like you're, you're training great, but not racing great. Did you feel like your racing matched up to what your training has been? Um, I feel like today I had a few bumps in the road. Um, I, um, what the heck happened in the swim? I yeah. Also, I hear, you hear penalties on the bike. You don't hear many penalties in the swim. Yeah, um, I actually, um, I, I came out of the swim and um, didn't put my wetsuit in the bag, so they called me back. So I went back and put everything in the bag and handed it over. And um, and then I didn't know until I got here to T2, but they um, said the legs were hanging out of the bag. So I got a four-minute stand down. And, four you know, minutes. four minutes, yeah, four minutes is a long time just when you're. So, um, you know, I just, I was a little upset, but, you know, you just try to move on and, and get over it and that, that's life you know Og imens halvdistancevinderne hos kvinderne lader champagnepropperne springe og de øvrige deltagere trætte og brugte begynder at pakke sammen kan vinderen af mindenes heldistance Chris Fischer fra Viborg lade sig hylde af både løbsdirektør publikum og familie the winner of challenge Denmark 2015 i have uh, you know like uh, three uh, small children and a full-time job and uh, sometimes my family they they really help me a lot to achieve what I what I want to achieve in the in a in a daily basis so uh, I was just thankful that I was that I was able to like uh, fulfill uh, all the expectations uh, from all the time that's put been put into this so I mean uh, it was really special to enjoy this with my family it was a good moment all right, guys, the half distance guys were quite pathetic. And there you go. That's how it's done. Hos kvinderne havde vinderen tyske Beate Gørts efter 9 timer, 22 minutter og 28 sekunders udfordringer overskud til at glæde sig over arrangementet. I am overwhelmed about this competition um, because everything was perfect. So um, I'm not a good swimmer. So the swim start was already perfect because I could orientate it by myself. So this is really, really good. And then I had a fast swim. So for me, it's fast, one hour and three minutes. And then uh, bike is my special thing. So I went on the bike and I had good legs. And so I enjoyed the whole tour. It was so nice. And to see all the volunteers over there to guide me the direction. And they all had a smile in their face. So everything was very nice. And we had no storm, so I enjoyed. 
because the legs were still good and um, yes, the parks and, and the area, the, the, the horse, the horse course was very interesting, so I enjoyed. Og den tyske vinder er ikke ene om at glæde sig over løbet. Løbsdirektøren Claus Vesterby var trods træthed glad og kunne lov gentales i 2016. It was the first year and, and of course we, we worked really hard for this year. We have a great event, but we, had, we, we will learn a lot of things and next year we will have an even better event. So yeah, that, it's, it's perfect. It will grow every year. Like, like the road, it's a big race, challenge road this morning. 30 years old and it's growing bigger bigger every year so we will do the same. <laughs>